Welcome, wonderful people, to my channel. You will have to bear with me today because I had a wisdom tooth taken out a few days ago. I'm still swollen on this side. I can still feel a whole lot going on in my mouth on this side and it's really gross. But I am going to push and plow through for the sake of you guys and this video. But if you have checked the title before you clicked on this, which I'm sure you probably would have because who doesn't, you will know that this video is actually about learning Two, langu two languages <laughs> at the same time. So at the moment, I'm currently learning Spanish and Chinese at the same time. And these are the methods that I'm actually using in my day-to-day -day life to actually learn these languages. So stay tuned if you wanna know how I do this and how I even manage to incorporate the Harry Potter series into learning these languages. Some of these tips you may have heard before, maybe in other videos or from tutors, whoever, um, but some of them are very, very specific to myself. They are actually things that I have come up with and found to be very, very useful for me. Um, and so I thought it might be very, very useful for others. This method can be used if you're learning one language, two languages, and then from there in even numbers. So like four languages, six languages, eight languages at the same time. But if you're learning six or eight languages at the same time, then you're probably a psycho if you see me looking down at any point it's actually just because i've got some notes written down here that i want to make sure that i mention okay so if i'm looking down it's not just because i have like a weird obsession with feet okay so let's get into the actual tips and methods and tricks okay so i'm actually going to break this down into four um sort of um areas which i'm sure we're all familiar with so reading writing listening and speaking okay Let's go for listening first. So honestly, like for real, for real, the listening part is my favorite part because it's so passive, you don't really have to do anything. We all know about Netflix. Okay, Netflix. I mean, if you don't have Netflix, then maybe you have some other like streaming subscription thing, whatever, for TV shows and movies. I don't know, but I know that Netflix is a really popular one. And I finally gave in and actually got a subscription to Netflix last year. Um, and I have found it so useful in terms of the listening part of um, my language practice. Now what I do, which I'm sure many of you have already heard or already do yourselves, is to pick a show, okay? And here's, here, there's two ways you can go about this. Either you pick a show you've never watched before, okay? So you've never watched it at all. And then you watch an episode in the language that you are learning so if that happens to be spanish you will go ahead and switch the audio over to spanish um and then have english subtitles at the bottom okay so this is for a show you've never watched before so once you finish that episode you re-watch that episode but this time when you re-watch it no subtitles you're just listening to the language so you're focusing on just picking out whatever words you can pick out trying to put sentences together by just the words that you've picked up, trying to guess what it is that they're saying. And of course, you're not gonna be able to pick out a lot, especially if it's a language that's spoken very, very quickly. But trust me, it's still good. Like I have picked up so many words just from doing that. However, if you are watching a show that you have watched before, then I would implore you, you see how I just throw in them kind of words in there, like implore, just to just to gas up this video a little bit. No, no way. Right, I would implore you to try and challenge yourself by not actually using the subtitles. So you already have watched the show. You already know the main storyline. Challenge yourself and still just watch the whole thing in this language that you're trying to learn, okay? Um, and once again, just see what you can piece together, see what conversations you can remember, um, and see what if you can gather what's happening in the scenes, um, just by your memory of what was happening in that scene, but also by you trying to pick out some of those words in that like, chosen language. And you will start to find that over time, you will eventually um, start to pick up words. Um, and I would say, if you can find a show um, that has subtitles or audio available in the two languages that you're learning, this is even better, because then what you can do is um, flip <laughs> daily. So maybe one day you can say, today is my um, Chinese day, I'm only focusing on learning Chinese. So all my reading exercises, writing exercises, everything is gonna be Chinese for today. Um, and so, yeah, you watch that show um, spoken in Chinese but with English subtitles if English is your native language. And the next day, you watch the next episode, but this time in Spanish, okay? Now, this can be time consuming, but learning two languages is not easy, so you're, you're gonna have to give some time. If you wanted to, 
you could probably use this as a reading exercise as well um, and flip it so that now the audio is in English but the subtitles are in your chosen language. Okay, now on to what we gonna talk about. Writing. So writing is a fun one. Well, it's actually not fun for me. Writing is actually the part I hate the most. <laughs> I think I mostly hate it just because one of the languages that I'm currently learning is Chinese and obviously the characters are a B for me and so it's just, it's not fun. But this is how I do the writing portion. I have decided to keep a journal. <laughs> That's literally it. And each day I write about my day in the journal basically, okay. So for those of you who already keep a journal, this would be quite easy to implement into your um, normal routine. For those of you who don't, this might not be because I had to kind of actively remind myself to keep on top of it, but it's so helpful. So what I do each day, I flip back and forth between the languages. So one day I might decide to write um, in Chinese about my day and the next day in Spanish. What you might find is that obviously you know your, your vocabulary in that language is not large yet okay so you don't know a whole lot of words maybe you don't know a whole lot of verbs or whatever else it is that's fine what you can either do is write in that language and maybe limit yourself and say you know what I am only going to write about the stuff that I actually know how to write okay anything that I don't know how to write yet I'm just not gonna put in the journal or you can say okay I'm still gonna write about every you know everything I want to write about about my day um, but the words I don't know, I'm going to look it up online and, you know, see what the translation is and then write that into the journal. I usually say it's better not to do that because I, well, I don't know about anybody else, but for me personally, when I start to kind of do that, I end up looking up a bunch of words as I'm writing. Every single word I don't know, I'm checking in the translations and I find it is I'm not actually retaining that information. I'm literally just translating it for the sake of translating and writing it into the book, but it's not actually sticking in my mind. Um, so what I prefer to do is I pick the main thing I want to make sure to put down in my journal for that day and I make sure there's maybe two words or maybe a few words that I don't know, no more than about five. Um, I will translate those ones and as I'm writing in the journal, I will make sure I use those words a couple of times over as I'm writing so that I'm actually retaining it. And then the next day, I flip to another um, to my other language that I'm learning and I do the same thing but in that language. Yeah, so that's how I go back and forth. So I have one day written in Spanish, one day written in Chinese, one day written in Spanish, one day written in Chinese. And for me, I prefer to keep going back and forth that frequently, just because that's what helps me to make sure I actually remember the stuff that I've learned just two days ago or one day ago, um, rather than doing a whole week in Chinese and then a whole week in Spanish, because I'm gonna forget a lot of the stuff that I learned in, like, um, when I was writing in Chinese two weeks before. So. For me, I prefer daily, but you can do it weekly and only flip each week between the languages um, or flip each month between the languages. It's up to you, but I prefer daily. Okay, so we have covered listening and we have covered writing. So let's go on to speaking. So guys, the speaking portion is probably the bit where I'm maybe more of an amateur there only because I've only recently taken that part seriously, which I regret. So before, and it's an easy mistake to make, especially if you're using textbooks and things like that, because you know, they're written. So you're reading stuff, you're writing stuff, and you don't actually realize that, yes, you are learning words, um, but a lot of what you're learning is written, seeing it on a page. Um, but then somebody can speak the same sentence to me in that language really quickly, and I'm like, oh my gosh, when I first started learning Chinese, and I was thinking like, I knew, <laughs> like I knew what was going on. Guys, I went to China. And there was a lady that was cleaning the apartment that I was staying in and when I say it, she just started busting out some Chinese and I was literally just like Huh? <laughs> so what I've started doing now is basically I'm testing out both italki and hello talk So I've had oh gosh, like you know when you've got like fluff on your lip. What is going on? Right? So I've used italki a couple of times now for both um, Mandarin and Spanish um, yeah, and I found that, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> okay, here's my problem. You know, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm so frugal as hell. I don't like to spend money, yeah? So every time I book a session and I have to, like, see, like, you know, the money, just, like, that I'm spending each time, I'm just like, oh, gosh. But it is worth it. It is actually good. Like, 
I'm actually going to be putting up a video soon of my first um, iTalkie session that I had, which was in Mandarin. Um, and it is actually really, really useful just to kind of go back and forth with someone just speaking. They take it at your pace um, and they're just throwing stuff at you, you know, up to your level so that you can start learning to um, hear what they're saying, break it down in chunks in your mind, comprehend it, and then, you know, spit out your response. Um, so I am finding it useful. I'm currently testing out Hello Talk as well. Um, and I have a feeling that I'm probably going to lean towards that one just because it's free but the only reason why I'm a bit eh with Hello Talk is because um, I think the vi actual video calls is you, you would have to actually pay for that whereas the free side you're only really getting like texting conversations and stuff um, so I'm a bit like oh I'm trying to focus on speaking not on reading and writing so I don't know I might just use both we'll see I'll probably have a video coming up soon about how I find both of those but of course my main point that I want to get out of this is that you have to have um, some form of speaking practice, like weekly at least. Like if you could do more frequently and it could be like, you know, bi-daily or something like that, even better. Gosh, I've just realised exactly how like swollen up the side of my face is, it's so annoying. If you can commit to at least weekly, that will definitely be the best thing to do. Okay, we are going to chat about reading and guys, this is where... Hold on. This is where these babies come into it. My pride and joy. Anyone who knows me knows that I love to read, as in I love to read. I read about maybe on average seven, eight novels um, a month. And I I know for 2019, I actually read, I think, 93 books that year, and I will be doing a video about that soon as well. So feel free to check that out. The way I use this to learn two languages is, you pick a book, in my case, I went with the Harry Potter series. What you're gonna do is you're gonna read it in the language that you're learning. Now, here's what I do. With the first book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, I take a page, so each day I take one page, and then I will read, that page in Chinese, okay, um, you know, bit by bit, obviously it takes a lot of here and there, some translation for the characters that I don't know, it's going back and forth. So this is why I only take a page a day because it takes so long for me to actually translate each page. But obviously as you get better and better, you become more familiar with the characters if you're learning a language that's, you know, using characters, or the more familiar you become with the vocabulary and the different words and stuff in your chosen language, the easier and the faster it'll be for you as you go through. So one day I'll read a page in Chinese and translate in Chinese. The next day I'll read the next page in Spanish. The next day I'll read the page after that in Chinese and then Spanish and then Chinese and then Spanish and then on and on and that. You get what I'm saying. So guys, when you are doing this, be wise with your choice. Pick a book you already know the storyline for, okay? And the reason why, you know the whole storyline, you're not gonna wanna like rush through and you know get to the end and see what's gonna happen because you already know what's gonna happen. So you're not filled with suspense um, and you're not like, you know, so like anxious that you decide to cheat and you know, just get an English version and just start reading in English, no, no, no. I chose the Harry Potter series for many, many reasons. I know the storyline, but also many of you who have read the Harry Potter series, you will know that each book in terms of the complexity of the language and the grammar and how difficult it is, it actually gets progressively more difficult um, as you go through the book. Now, obviously for a native English speaker, that's not very difficult at all. But what I mean is in terms of like just age category as well, obviously the first books were written for, you know, primary school age children, that's, you know, elementary school or whatever to the rest of the world. As the character, main characters are growing, so do the actual age of the books and so does the language of the books. They actually grow as well and they become more complex. So that's actually perfect for you in terms of learning a language because you want to start off easy and then progressively challenge yourself more and more and more. Honestly, guys, that was the best, oh my gosh, the best method when it came to reading, hands down. Pick a book you know, make sure it's like a series so that you know it's kind of staying consistent um but make sure as well that it's something that starts off a bit simpler as you, and then you know progressively gets a bit more difficult i mean it doesn't have to it can stay simple it can if you want you can start off hard and just you know mess up your whole like life you know it's up to you do as you want those are actually 
the best tips I can give you in terms of learning two languages at once um, is to do it that way. And of course, like I said at the start of this video, you can use the same method for learning just one language um, and it will still work out just fine for you. For me, using the Harry Potter books, um, writing a journal worked better for me than any um, Chinese textbook or any Spanish textbook or anything has ever worked for me ever. So yeah, that is the end of it. If you found any of these tips useful, oh my gosh, like please give a thumbs up for this video. And of course, drop it in the comments and let me know if you do decide to actually start implementing any of these, let me know how it's going for you. Um, because I actually do pay attention to the comments um, and actually do find them useful. In fact, the only reason I started trying out the hello talk was because um, someone in the comments, a really nice lady actually pointed it out to me um, and um, recommended it and so I decided to give it a try. All right well I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to check out some of my previous videos if you do find this interesting um, and you know see you on the next one. All right bye guys.